good morning and thank you for coming for spending half of your weekend on a technical conference. Uh, thank you for, to organizers for inviting me here. Uh, my name is, oops, yeah, my name is Vagif, and I work as a consultant uh, in Miles. It's Norwegian uh, consultancy company. Uh, used to work a lot with uh, C Sharp, and that will be main focus of my uh, talk today. Uh, last few years, I've been working with uh, F Sharp, uh, Actor Model, Akka. Uh, so if you have any questions about that. You can talk to me in, in between sessions. Um, uh, and that was a project for uh, Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, NRK. Uh, actually working with uh, uh, one of the colleagues from Krakow, who is mostly working uh, remote, uh, and he's from Ma Making Waves. Uh, but uh, today's talk will be about different things. Um, it will be about... Uh, designing modern times API. And uh, of course we need to limit the scope of our uh, definition of API because very often uh, nowadays when people talk about API they mean uh, web API, like REST API. And that's not what we'll be talking about. It's uh, uh, API which you make on the top of your library uh, in uh, C-Sharp World class library. Uh, and not, we shouldn't treat really any library as uh, like polished API. It all depends uh, whether or not you will be exposing it to the rest of the world or it will be just consumed internally by your colleagues. Who is developing uh, uh, libraries that actually used by a large group of developers, not just in your organization. Yeah, very few, very few of you. So, and you probably, uh, who has been exposed to such work, know that there are some different requirements to that. Like if you're working with internal things or if, if you expose it. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a question, how much effort you, do you need to make your API uh, public? But, uh, very often, uh, when you cross that, uh, uh, that line, you need to uh, up think about making things differently. So it's not uh, apparent that what I'm going to talk today, you'll be immediately uh, applying to, to your code. But uh, today is Saturday, and I thought that uh, since you are people who decided to come to talk about technical things on Saturday, then, okay, let me talk about some perhaps more advanced stuff. And it's good to be aware of these things. So when the time comes, you can, you can make a right choice. Uh, so uh, current uh, state of C-sharp is offering some modern times technique when you design your API. And... Uh, of course, it's link expression. If, uh, if I can find single uh, most influential addition to C Sharp after it was first announced, it's probably link expression because it changed the way we write code in C Sharp. And uh, of course, that uh, made it possible to create API, to, to create interface for our libraries in a way that was not possible before. <laughs> it also influenced uh, the, the style, so-called fluent style, like chaining methods, we use it a lot of <coughs> uh, with link expressions also. Uh, that was also possible before link was announced, but uh, uh, it, it, it influenced a lot developers after link came. Then such uh, strange thing like dynamic support in C-sharp, uh, which uh, apparently is quite handy when we integrate uh, our C-sharp code with uh, external world, like with some integration projects. Of course, traditional ways to write some proxy classes. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it, you know, it's a burden, and sometimes you can actually quickly uh, embrace external world without doing that. And of course, uh, C-sharp developers learning from 
JavaScript world where no, people don't bother actually uh, defining strong, strong types for doing quite efficient am amount of work. And that's outside of topic of this talk, but since I, I've been using F Sharp last year, I just have to mention then, of course, within F Sharp world, it's so called type providers that we're using instead of manually writing proxy classes. And that, uh, that th those changes, uh, some of them are controversial because C Sharp is a statically uh, typed language. And uh, so uh, some devs are quite skeptical about uh, bringing uh, dynamic uh, elements in, in C Sharp. And uh, it, again, it's, it's your call, it's your choice whether you need it. But it's good to be aware of that because sometimes it opens uh, a possibility to, become, to be more efficient in what you're doing. So, uh, uh, a, bit, a little bit of history. So, elements of functional programming which were added in, it was uh, C Sharp 3 in 2007. And uh, uh, it's so-called language integrated query, uh, major uh, addition to C Sharp. Uh, first of all, and we'll be talking uh, during this talk about lambda expressions. Uh, so you can uh, send uh, function, not functional calls, results of functional calls, but definition of functional calls as a method of your arguments. Then extension methods. Anonymous types. Uh, it wouldn't be possible to implement link if uh, anonymous types wasn't uh, added to C Sharp and .NET CLR. Because when you make a call to a database and you want to retrieve back results, which is pro projection of some table, like select uh, user ID, uh, username from users. What happens that you, you're getting on the fly, you're getting created a new type, which consists of user ID and username. So there is no such type defined, and that should be done on the fly, and that is implemented using anonymous types, which only came to C Sharp in 2007. And of course, expression trees, which we'll be uh, looking at later. Uh, when it comes to links, there are two different flavors. Uh, So-called fluent style, where you chain methods, uh, and uh, so-called query comprehension. So it, it likes like new keywords, which is actually new keywords, uh, but they're open for any, anything that exposes I enumerable. So you, can, you don't need to use it uh, against database, you can use it against some in-memory objects. Who prefers using, uh, oh, first of all, who is using link? with C-sharp. Yeah, almost everyone. Who prefers using first way uh, chaining? Oh, majority. Who prefers to using uh, query comprehensions? No, nobody. Wow, interesting. And of course, uh, there is a huge number of libraries using an expo exposing link and, uh, and uh, link providers. and. Of course, the, mo the most popular one is NC Framework, which uh, people uh, probably have like love and hate relationships. Um, some love it, some just don't touch it. I uh, think that that NC Framework uh, adds to you know too many op opinionated uh, decisions to your code. But anyway, it's uh, with 50 uh, 2 million downloads last time I checked. It's uh, definitely most uh, popular link provider. But it doesn't have to be database. You, have, uh, you can parse HTML, also make link, link provider out of it. Of course, alternative to NC framework like nHibernate and so on. Uh, and uh, there are link providers and there are link expressions. Uh, so link provider is anything that imp implements uh, support for iQueryable of T. And the difference between iQueryable and iNumerable is that iNumerable is something that is considered to be in memory. Uh, uh, well, sorry, it doesn't need to be in memory, but uh, 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 it, uh, uh, there are some assumptions uh, uh, about in-memory placement of your results. Well, uh, with our I, I, I queryable supports so-called deferred query execution. So you can actually build your queries and, uh, and then run them into the data source. 
and then it will execute it when you need it. So uh, I, I queryable is more complicated than that because it, co it converts, translates your uh, link expressions and queries into something that runs against the database. Uh, but uh, link expressions, it's, uh, uh, it's about lambda expressions. So uh, this is a call to link providers, so DB companies. It's, it's called into a uh, link provider. It can be in memory thing, it can be Oracle, SQL Server, anything. While this is an uh, expression which we uh, define to evaluate the query. And we'll be talking about uh, link expression during this talk. Uh, it's uh, more complicated to implement link provider. Also, if you, uh, who is using link providers? In, like uh, SQL Server, Oracle, Interesting. It's very few people are using link providers, but using link. So you're using link mostly by, uh, with uh, just uh, in, uh, with in-memory collections. This is is this correct? Probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, link providers uh, uh, is a is a complex project, and uh, if ever you come with the idea of creating a link provider, you should be careful. Uh, not to implement the wrong abstraction. And Microsoft itself did some mistakes. For example, they have so-called uh, WC data, da, WCF data services. Who has been using, uh, who knows what OData protocol is? Yeah, f few, few people. All the versions of Nougat was using uh, OData protocol. Um, it's, uh, it's typically REST interface for your database. Like, let's expose database like this has a uh, uh, REST interface, and it's actually, it may be a bad idea if you just open all tables and columns of, of, your, um, um, of your database. But what, what is worse is that uh, Microsoft trying to pretend that this is link provider, so it should support all uh, uh, link closes, but in fact, uh, all data doesn't support them all. So you often w uh, were getting runtime expression, uh, runtime errors, and that was, that was a bad thing. Uh, and unlike link provider, link expressions, they, they just don't make any assumptions about uh, your underlying data model. It's just you use idiomatic C-sharp expressions to send into your API. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, since 2010, C-sharp has been supporting dynamic elements, so which uh, came as a radical addition. It was driven by uh, integration with things like COM objects, uh, Excel. Uh, so instead of uh, using uh, either proxy classes or uh, 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 some uh, calls uh, use, uh, uh, where you have to specify uh, hard-coded strings, uh, you, you could pretend that you're writing it like a part of the language, but actually it was dynamically evaluated. Who has been, uh, who are using dynamic elements of C-sharp? Yeah, few people. Uh, so this is uh, how dynamic code uh, written in uh, C-sharp that use dynamic can look. And uh, so it all starts with uh, uh, dynamic uh, provider. So you need to call into something that return you dynamic stuff. And after that, uh, compiler simply leaves you alone. So it doesn't check anything here. So it's up to your uh, dynamic provider to evaluate this and uh, present the result. So if something goes wrong here, then uh, you just throw some, uh, some exception. Uh, so there, there is no absolutely compiler support for that. And, so, and this is, of course, uh, what irritates a lot of people, but sometimes it has its, uh, its value. For example, uh, you can use dynamic uh, binding in uh, com interop to avoid uh, casting. Uh, you can uh, access database, and this example from simple data, it's uh, one of the called micro ORMs. So there is some convention which says that, uh, so we're calling database open, users find all by mail. What does it mean? 
Okay, we assume that there is a table called user or users. It's flexible about that. And we assume that there is a column called email. And then there is a convention. Then, okay, find all by email. It's like select stuff from, uh, uh, from users where email and then specify email address. So it's, it's a radical way of doing that, but actually it's been quite popular library. And uh, where also uh, works ex ex especially well. If you have uh, you know, some external world untyped and you want to bring it in. So uh, uh, developers who used uh, uh, Gherkin probably uh, use Specflow. And then this is how you can translate from tables. You have this name, birthday, height, and you want dynamically build types out of it. Then this is uses, uh, it creates dynamically uh, <coughs> type out, uh, out of it and sends to, to the database, which again expects columns to have names like uh, name, birthday, and height. And there are some popular libraries using C Sharp Dynamics, uh, Signal R from Microsoft, uh, Nancy. Who, who used Nancy? Yeah, a few people. Uh, simple data, as I mentioned, is HTTP, and so on. So, uh, should your API support some of that? And that's, I can't really advise you, because uh, this, this is not what this talk is about. Uh, it's, my talk is about like, opening uh, possibilities, so you can have some multiple uh, cho uh, choices. Also, I will show you how you can build your API so it can be accessed both in, uh, in static way, also in dynamic way. And the choice will be left for the users. Uh, so, uh, so it will look like the same API, but you can use it from a completely different style, which makes uh, it... Uh, Unified, so you don't need to expose different APIs for different uh, users preferring different styles. So uh, I'll show how you can implement it. So what should you should be aware of? So dynamic stuff is especially uh, uh, tricky uh, because of what I said. That once you uh, declare that your things are dynamic, uh, you lose support from compiler. For example, first or default, if it was statically invoked code, then compiler would, okay, first or default, and if it's enumerable, then I know there is extension method, first or default, it's link extension methods. I will call that, and it will bind this call to first or default. Uh, if you have dynamic provider, if you build your own dynamic, dynamic uh, provider, then such extension methods won't be evaluated by compiler. You will have to take responsibility for mapping them to your code. So uh, you should be careful like freely mixing uh, dynamic and statically typed code. Uh, so uh, coming back to the database world. So this is a uh, link expression. Uh, and uh, if you want to build some API that supports like dynamic invocation, you can use a simple data approach, like select company name and years established and uh, so it will your so there is no such method but your dynamic provider will you know parse the string and make calls out of it but uh, what I'll be showing it actually how to do it in unified way so uh, no matter whether you're using static type code or dynamic you can uh, use same uh, code with just difference in how you obtain the uh, the entrance, the entry point to your queries. Uh, so API style is, uh, of course, opinionated question, and then uh, you can choose uh, what names to use for your methods. So it, again, it's, it's, this is up to you, but uh, so what I'm showing is how to avoid publishing two APIs. So how you can have just one API, and uh, people can use different styles to, uh, to use it. So, uh, We'll have, for, for example, uh, in this for example project for this talk, I'll be showing uh, something that everyone knows, how to build uh, database queries, um, so how to make API that exposes that. 
So there are some very simple things like from where or the by, maybe descending and select. And it will be one API, and as I said, it will be it will support two paradigms. Uh, so if you want to consider adding a dynamic layer to your API, what are the costs? I mean, how expensive is that? Actually, the costs are very little, almost negligible, comparing to like, the cost of writing your own library. Uh, in the example project which I'll be showing, uh, the code library uh, consists of about 700 lines of code. And there is a small dynamic extension library which opens it for dynamic calls with just three classes and 76 lines of code. But what's more important is that this library, extension library, it's practically domain independent. So once you know how to do it, you can use it everywhere in, like, uh, in, in, in every other project. So I use it, for example, in an uh, open source project which I support. It's called Simple Data Client, which uh, where the main code is about 3,000 lines of code, and uh, uh, this dynamic extensions library is just you know, 50, 59 lines of code, which is just enabler. So uh, this is our strategy for hybrid API. Uh, so our core API will be statically typed, uh, and we'll be using link expressions. Uh, and uh, on the top of it, we add s a small dynamic layer, which will uh, enable uh, calling it from dynamic clients using the same style. So this is example of how it can be used. So if you have some Finder uh, interface, then you can publish extension in a separate DLL. And for client code, it will be looking fairly similar. So you have uh, this Fluent interface where this is link expression, and this is also looks like link expression, even though it will be evaluated by uh, dynamic language runtime. So uh, I'll be showing some code. Uh, uh, we will be using small project which is called uh, SQL command builder which is uh, of course building SQL commands is known for everyone uh, it's uh, inspired by open source project simple or data client uh, which uses the same principles um, and I'll be showing both uh, link expressions and uh, dynamic support for uh, for this API so what is hybrid SQL command builder uh, so we'll be writing something that looks like link provider, which, as we found out, most of people uh, prefer this syntax. And this will be supported subset for our SQL commands. From, where, or the by, or the by descending, and select. And... Uh, we will start as a warm-up. Let's say we are in a non-link expression world. Uh, we'll start, this, there is untyped version, where you specify everything just as strings. String table name, string condition, and so on. And then, that would be your uh, command builder using uh, untyped version. So it's, uh, it's a bit ugly, because we're using the statically typed language. Uh, but, okay, it does its work. Who has been using uh, Dapper ORM? A few people. And, you know, in Dapper, this is how, how you do it. You, pre you prepare your uh, queries, your commands, just as a statically typed command, and you execute them. And, uh, you know, some people, some developers don't like it, but as long as you have a limited number of places in your code, where you write these queries, that's not really dangerous uh, because you have full control of all these few places. What becomes pr a problem if you open some flexibility for building up commands, then uh, it's, it's not really fine to, con to continue that, uh, doing that. So 
this uh, how our internal implementation uh, might look then. So everything string based. And this is a, a very simple implementation of command format. So you just have a string builder and you start building it up. And then everything is string based. And uh, you know this is not fine for us as uh, uh, C-sharp developers because uh, we want to, to do better than that. So uh, let's move on to typed version of it. So how it might look. So we don't want to specify something like we, we had uh, with a string-based version, where and then uh, just a magic string showing the, uh, the actual query. We want to use idiomatic C-sharp. So it's, it will be lambda, which uh, will, we, we can say here, uh, if, if, we're talk, if, we, if our type T is user, then we can say x dot user ID equals 12, for example, and that will work. Uh, so then we should use for such places expression. So it's, this comes coming from link expression. Uh, it's the expression of func of t bool. Uh, why func? Because we, we evaluate, uh, actually we don't evaluate uh, our pre bool boolean predicates. We just specify, provide notation that will be related later. Uh, and so it, it, there will all be a function of our uh, type that will be sent here. And they'll be producing uh, different results based on type of clothes. For example, when it comes to where, of course, it's a Boolean because we evaluate condition. When it comes to order by, order by descending, and so on, then it will be an object, which actually will be a combination of uh, uh, columns. So it, so, it, so it will be type built up from, from, uh, from other types. So, and this is a usage example, which is very familiar to every one of you. So we can expose something like this in, in our API. People will, uh, should be able to write X, year, year established, then Boolean, uh, conjunction and so on. So how can we build that? Uh, we need to uh, learn how to parse link expression trees. Who uh, actually did that? Who parsed link expression trees in some projects? Yeah, th three people. And you know, it's uh, it's about eighty-two, I think. Uh, uh, node types which you need to understand, so it might look scary in uh, in the beginning, because uh, there is some something which uh, you were completely unaware before, and then suddenly you need to to learn how to parse that, and uh, that's not really that hard. You just need to try and uh, uh, just. Use it first if you if you have some ideas about uh, exposing link, link expressions in your API. Uh, you have to first maybe try it as a you know Saturday project, uh, play a little bit with that, read some open source code, and then actually things w will uh, quickly fall into right places. So it's not that hard, uh, and of course. As a result, you will give you will you will get back expressiveness of your DSL, because it's very good to pack all these expressions as part of your uh, uh, no, no, not part of your method names. So you don't need to to specify something like uh, sort by year, uh, but you just pack everything which has to do with. Uh, uh, Query parameters into uh, link expressions, so everything will be uh, looking very idiomatic, like you, you're just working with uh, native C sharp, and your API only exposes the major uh, query functionality. Uh, <coughs> and this example of link expression tree. So if you have an expression which consists of uh, 
We're checking for companies year established greater than 2000 and number of employees less than 100. So it involves actually quite some of expressions. So of course there is a conjunction. So oh, we need we have a left and uh, right expression, and there is and also it, this is boolean and. So here we have greater than and less than, and then when we evaluate greater than, we use member access because this is member access. We have member method of companies, and we access by year established, and this is a constant value, and the same is here. We have member access here, number of employees, and uh, 100. It's a constant value here. So this is how link expressions are parsed, and you have to uh, implement support for that. And you can provide any interpretation. You can redefine greater as less. Uh, so it's, uh, it will be entirely up to you. So uh, there is some checklist which... Uh, uh, just a reminder of uh, what you should be doing when you implement uh, your link expression parsing. But I think it's better to show in uh, using just uh, code. Um, I had to increase um, phones because it's not a very big screen. Uh, we won't be spending very much time here. I just wanted to uh, run through some tests to see like uh, how we navigate through the code which parses link expressions. Can you actually see, read the code here? Okay. So uh, here is a small project which uh, has SQL command builder. And of course, like every uh, a library, every API, it should have some tests. And now there are some uh, tests. Select all where order by, where we, uh, let's say we, uh, we want to execute that. So we do some selection uh, with some uh, condition and we order by some column. So we will try to debug it and see what's happening. Yeah, so what, uh, what this test does, uh, uh, as you see, it, it need, uh, needs to build uh, a SQL command from link expressions and then compare it to a string which we know how it's supposed to look. Yeah, so this is a uh, link expression for that. Yeah, and now we start par parsing. So now interesting things start happening. You see, what, what happens, uh, first thing we evaluate, expression node type. Equal. Okay. So... Parse binary ex expression. Left expression is company name, and then if we evaluate right expression, let's see how we're evaluating it. Constant, parse, parse constant expression. Yeah, so we have left expression, we have right expression, and now we, we're creating a new expression out of them. Yeah, so we, we interpret it as equality. And we could actually interpret in a different way. So let me show you how, uh, how this code for implementation code look for that. So if I reduce the test and command expression links. So, uh, so all expression parsing consists of you know, careful and listing all nodes, expression nodes that you support, and providing parsing for them. 
you see every function is very small. It's just a few lines of code. But you need to take care of things which you support. For example, if you support some functions, which of course, in the case of SQL, you do support, then uh, you should provide support for them. If you support some uh, ex operators, here are the list of operators that we support. And there are some function mapping. Because uh, you need to map, uh, let me show, yeah. So this shows actually what happens behind the scenes when we send C-sharp functions, or like .NET uh, uh, string functions, down to database provider. So everything needs to be mapped, because uh, in SQL Server, there is no index of, there is char index. And uh, there is no length, there is len. So you have to... Uh, define the, the set of functions which you support and you have to carefully map everything uh, uh, down to what, whatever your API implementation supports. And uh, it, in the beginning it uh, looks like a tedious work, but like in the end it's just a few lines of code. You just have to be accurate and it opens possibility of not learning uh, underlying uh, provide a specific functions, but using uh, built-in .NET types, like string in this case. So far, so good. So this is uh, how our typed command builder workflow will work. So uh, we have builder from table. So this assigns a type, because we have expression of T. This is our T. Then uh, we assign where expression. This is expression func of bool. This is conversion. And after that, after we build and interpreted uh, everything, we need to create a string back. So uh, here where we are. Uh, we, uh, we have been through exp link expression parsing and expression evaluation. So now our API can support uh, uh, link expressions instead of providing uh, data source specific uh, function calls. So how can we use it for dynamic code? So that's a totally separate thing because if we only uh, want to support link expression in our API, we're done. But as I mentioned in the beginning, it will be interesting to uh, publish hybrid API. So how? How can it be done? And since I mentioned that actually it's not very many lines of code, let's see if uh, uh, what needs to be done to, to enable that. So this is our typed command builder. So everything is based on link now. Uh, and this is what we implemented now. So we can support expressions like that. What we want to support in addition, that our API can be used in that manner. So we create some dynamic query expression, and then we start writing stuff which looks like, almost like link, but will be evaluated dynamically. So this is to be implemented. So uh, our original command build interface, it looked like that with uh, a lot of methods providing this uh, expression of T. Uh, this is where we will need to, for every method, we need to provide another overload because dynamic runtime won't understand that at all. It will not pass it a dynamic. Uh, well, it will pass if it's only one method. It will try to pass your dynamic object there, but then it will fail. But then it will, we need a uh, dynamic runtime to pass dynamic uh, expressions here. Then they can be interpreted and uh, uh, converted into respective link expressions. So, and then type client will work like this, and dynamic client will look almost identical. 
This is for order by. Again, we need to add a new method. So there will be one extra method for every method that accepts link expression. And this is select. So adding, of course, method overloads is trivial. Uh, and how to interpret them, this new, uh, newly added method, is more demanding. And uh, uh, there is a simple way. Uh, there is dynamic object offered by uh, .NET, which is uh, limiting. And in our case, it won't work. So we'll need to implement so-called dynamic meta object provider interface. So our API can be magically used from dynamic clients. But it, uh, the method uh, interface name is long, but uh, it looks maybe a bit frightening, but you will see that the actual code is, is not. So uh, let me show you what we will need to add to our code. So this is SQL command builder, original project. And this SQL command builder dynamic, and I deliberately put it into different project just to show you that it's not really big. Uh, and so the essence of it, what we're looking at now, it's just one file, dynamic command expressions, which, uh, which how many lines is that? Yeah, it's about 73 lines, yes. So what we need to do here is uh, implement bindings here. So when, every, when somebody calls x.company, this is dynamic thing. Uh, there is no type behind x. So this is bind get member. So when there is such a call, we need to interpret it and uh, replace it with something which is... Uh, which we know. So uh, if, we, if we look at our dynamic test, let's execute same type of test, select where order by. And let's see what's happening. Okay. Yeah, bind get member. So uh, what are we getting here? By the name companies. So what's happening here is that somebody wrote an expression x dot companies, but it's dynamic world. Uh, so. Uh, uh, runtime doesn't know what to do. It sends us, okay, there is attempt to implement get property. Please provide something for that. So we need to, here we, we, we're doing replacement and calling into our main API. And if we continue execution, another uh, bind get member, which is now company name. You see, it's the same method which is called both, both for so-called uh, type names and field names. So companies is a type name. Company name is a field name, but runtime doesn't know because we are in dynamic world. It just knows that somebody called a member. So we need to provide interpretation for, for all of that and, and properly resolve it based on current schema of our underlying data source, whether it's table, it's column, and so on. So there may be some uh, conflicts if we have uh, column names uh, equal to table names. We need to uh, understand context very well. This can, be, uh, can become a problem. But once uh, it's all resolved, then your test, your test will work. So uh, this is how workflow works for uh, dynamic invocation. So we have dynamic expression. We find suitable method overload. We convert to type expression. And then we follow type workflow. 
Uh, so if uh, you're only interested into sending things into your uh, library, then actually that brings us to the completion of our mission. But if you all also want to get back results, then uh, more things may need to be polished. Because uh, if you're using dynamic uh, syntax, then you're getting back some dynamic object and you want to be able to use it in uh, uh, in standard way, like uh, uh, calling your objects by properties. So then we need to extend uh, our dynamic part with uh, possibility to interpret results so they can be used uh, in, uh, with a better syntax. And I will explain in a, in a uh, in a few seconds, what do I mean by better, uh, better syntax? When we uh, receive back collections, uh, in our example project, it's dictionary of string to objects. So we get something like dictionary, uh, where we would need to write dot, then magic string company name, and then we, we don't want to use that. We want to use dot company name. So you see, this is tedious. Result dot first parenthesis dot company name, and uh, that's that's not good. So by adding uh, more uh, functionality to our dynamic layer, we can actually uh, provide smooth interpretation of of results in dynamic world. So. Uh, we will need to implement a couple of new classes, dynamic result collection and dynamic result row. But uh, the outcome will be like this. You see? Uh, result dot company name, result dot company name here. Uh, so it's, it looks much better than uh, it used to look. So now dynamic client and type client, they work exactly the same way. So by implementing this little addition to treating results, you actually make your API completely interchangeable for dynamic and uh, uh, typed clients. I, I won't run any uh, tests for that, but just uh, to show you that it needs just a couple of very small classes, dynamic result collection, collections which just provides uh, bridge between collection results to the and dynamic world and the same for dynamic result row it's a small it's a small binder which uh, uh, when it hits dictionary uh, of string object it extracts its values and then puts it in, in a respective dynamic object so it will look like a, a member call so, uh, and this, these are very two small classes, and you implement them uh, only once for, uh, for for the lifetime of your APIs. So you can reuse it in other APIs too. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't think I will. I, I will need to like go deep into the actual uh, code of command processor, uh, and then processing workflow will be like this. We get some native result in our example, it's a uh, dictionary of string object. In the real world, it can be uh, some provided specific types, uh, whatever your database or data source returns, and then you convert them into typed or dynamic version of your API. And uh, all this code which I, I've been showing is uh, cross-platform uh, compatible. So you actually, it's, it's .NET standard. It supports .NET standard 2. It can actually support .NET standard 1.6. Uh, so you can build it on any platform, including Xamarin. And uh, I prefer not to do like live demo with mobile phones uh, during the talks, but this is a screenshot from, uh, from the real uh, project. Actually, the same project, just an uh, additional mobile client for it, which I built using Xamarin. 
and uh, run using uh, iPhone simulator. So it's the same unit test which we run. They run in this uh, in this phone. So it all works. Uh, it in the beginning uh, when dynamic uh, were announced, uh, mobile clients didn't support them. Uh, then support to Android came later, much later. Uh, support for um, iPhone came, but now uh, anything which is related to link expressions and dynamic method invocation you can run on, uh, on mobile uh, clients. And actually I heard that in some uh, project where memory uh, consumption uh, uh, is very important, uh, some, some devs, they, they prefer uh, dynamic syntax, so they avoid uh, creating more st uh, static types. So, uh, to conclude, uh, what I've been showing uh, today, it's, uh, it's not something that you will probably necessarily need in your pro uh, projects, especially if you're work working with a customer project, uh, where you deliver some internal software, but uh, it's, it helps to be aware of such possibilities because if you need to expose your API to reach out larger groups of developers, then you never know what they actually prefer. And then you, it, it pays off to build a, a unified um, API which can be accessed by using different uh, syntax uh, uh, and sometimes used in a way which you actually w w was not aware of. Uh, just for for the record, uh, this uh, open source library I mentioned, where all this was uh, implemented, I think uh, uh, today it's about 300,000 downloads of it. And uh, most of the uh, developers using uh, typed version, but some others, especially those exposed to integration projects like uh, 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 sh uh, they integrate with stuff like SharePoint, uh, uh, with Microsoft Dynamics, they for some reason prefer dynamic version of it, dynamic syntax. So it's, it's good to be aware, and uh, uh, it's uh, always nice to expose uh, nicely looking APIs. So uh, I think we have some time for questions. If you have any, anything you want to ask, say, object. Okay, then um, I'll be around. Uh, ask me if you have any question about this, or on my badge it says, talk to me about F Sharp and Akka, because this is something which I've been doing last years. So enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.